Hello. Um, so we want to um, continue with uh, the image of a curve and the transformation. Okay. So this is, I think, the second example. So uh, in this example, you want to consider this transformation T, where W is given by S, right? Z is not the positive negative one, otherwise it's closer. Okay, from the Z plane to the W plane, where Z is this and then W is this, as usual. Hey, first question. Show that the image under T of the circle, right? This circle, okay, in the Z plane is a line L in the W plane. In other words, if I transform it in the W plane, w plane I'm going to get it up. I'm going to get a line. Let's call that line L. Find the Cartesian equation of L and sketch it. Okay? That's the first part. The second part says that you want to show that the image under T, so we are basically using the same transformation, T of the curve, x squared plus y squared is equal to 4, in the, x, in the z plane is a circle C in the W plane. Find the Cartesian equation of C and then sketch it. Okay? So we're going to follow the same, uh, the same kind of approach. All right? Uh, let me get rid of this to make room. So we'll be using this trans transformation a lot. So I'm just going to write it here. The view is equal to minus IZ plus I all over Z plus 1. Okay? So let's keep that in A. The A in A we have this. So A, so A we have in A, the absolute value of Z is equal to 1, and then in B, all we need is this absolute value of Z is equal to 2. Right? Oh, so so here in B, see x squared plus y squared is, is, what, is equal to 4. That's a circle of radius 2, right? Circle, center 0. Um, radius 2. So, so, so you have to know that you can represent this, okay, in a complex form as this. Alright? So this is the same as that. So now that we have this, so we are good to go, actually. So in the first one, in the, in the first one, we want to show that this transforms under W to a line. And we want to show that this guy will transform under W T, right, into a uh, circle. C, like that. So that's basically the equation. So we're going to take A. A, we have um, W here. So we are using the same thing, the same thing. You want to rewrite it, find the absolute value, so that once you have absolute value, values of Z, you replace it with 1. Okay, that is the point. So you have I Z plus I all over Z plus 1. I multiply this out, so I have W Z plus W is equal to minus I Z plus I. This gives me, I'm going to group the um, Z's, right? So I'll bring I here. So I have W minus I is equal to negative I Z. This goes there, gives me um, minus. Good. So let's go up here, get rid of this. Let's get rid of that. Get rid of this. And what do we have? Okay? So now I can factorize Z out. Okay? So I have W minus I is actually I can pull out the negative Z. So I have minus Z. Then I'm left with I here plus W. See? So I can divide through by this. So I have W minus I all over W plus I, right? Is equal to the given Z. So now I can take the absolute value of uh, both sides, right? So if I do that, I'm going to have the absolute value of all of this all over plus I is the absolute value of. Z, know that the absolute value of negative, well, this is the absolute value of negative 1 if you like, right? And the absolute value of Z. But the absolute value of minus 1 is 1, right? And the absolute value of Z is what? In A, the absolute value of Z is 1. So 1 and 1 gives us 1, so all of this is equal to 1. Therefore, this 
Now the absolute value of this is the same as the absolute value of this minus s. If you look at the properties of absolute values for a complex numbers, okay? So this implies, I'm just going to do it here, it implies that the absolute value of W minus i is equal to I'm multiplying this by that absolute value of W plus i. Okay? Now, with the W plane, what does that represent? You can imagine if this was these, you know what that is, right? That will be a perpendicular bisector, okay? That will be a perpendicular bisector of the line joining uh, this and that. Now, you can rewrite this as this, right? This is W uh, minus the point here will be zero and negative I, right? And this is W minus, this is 0 minus i, minus minus, this is negative, so this should be positive, right? This is minus i, you see? So, oh. okay, so you see that it is the perpendicular bisector of the point of the line joining the point 0, 1 and 0, negative 1, okay? So, in the, uh, in the W plane, U and V, okay, I have the point 0, 1, 0, 1, if you like, is here, and this is 0, negative 1, 0 and negative 1 is that, negative 1 is here. So the line joining the 2 is this, and then this is equal to this, means that that locus is a perpendicular bisector. So the, because it's equal is not from here, the perpendicular bisector will just be the line here. You see? And that line is just V is equal to what? Zero. Like Y or zero. That's this line. So it's a perpendicular bisector. Bisector line L is a perpendicular bisector of line. Joining, joining the points 0, 1, and the point 1, negative, 0, negative 1. Okay? And the sketch is given by this. So basically, we have, we have solved this one. So in the z-plane, it's a circle, center 0 and radius 1. But when you transform it using this transformation, you see, it moves from a circle to become a line. Okay? Good. Um, the last, uh, the last one, B. So let's look at B. Ha, hold on. Oh, okay, good. I will still need. Uh, I was. I will still need to use that. So, so let's. Uh, good thing I haven't. I haven't uh, erased it. Okay. Then I don't have to go all the way to do that. So B. In B, um, we're still going to use the same transformation, and when we manipulated this transformation, we got that, right? We got that absolute value of, um, all over the absolute value of 1 plus i is equal to the absolute value of z, right? This is 1. This is the absolute value of z, you see? Now, in question B, the absolute value of z is 2. So this is equal to 2, not 1. It was 1 here. Okay? So now we are going to get this. This is now the locus that we need to describe. This is 2 W plus I. Alright? Good. Now, remember that when we did this perpendicular bisector stuff, I told you that when you get this, you have to be careful, right? This does not mean that it is a perpendicular bisector. So you really have to expand this using the so-called algebraic approach or the Cartesian form, right? In order to see uh, the, the locus um, in the W plane. So once you get here, let W be equals to U plus V I, plug it in here and then manipulate the expression. Okay? So let's get rid of this and then see what we get. Okay? 
So we say that now the transformation becomes a circle. So we need to um, we need to see whether we actually get a circle when we do that. So from here, let W be U plus B I. I thought we know that is it already. So plug it in here. So absolute value of U plus B I minus I is equal to 2, absolute value of U plus B I plus 9. This I can rewrite as, I'm going to prove the real and imaginary stuff. This is B minus 1 I. This is U. This is B plus 1 I. So you can square both sides to the absolute values and stuff. And so this will give you U squared. Okay, so square both sides. If you square both sides, you have u squared. They have b minus one squared. Okay, is equal to four multiplied by u squared, right? Plus b plus one squared. See that? Okay, so expand it. This will give you u squared. This is b squared minus two b plus one. This is four u squared, right? This is 4b squared. This is 2b, that gives me 8b. This is plus 1, so it becomes 4 here, right? Now let's do times. I'll take the u to this side, so um, that will give me 3u squared. If I take b squared to that side, I get 3b squared, okay? I take negative 2b there, I get 10b. And b, okay? I take 1 there, I get 4 minus 1, that's 3. So I'm plus 3 here. Is equal to zero. So you see that the circle is already popping out. Divide through by three. If you do, you have u squared plus b squared plus 10 over 3, b plus 1 is equal to zero. So now you can complete the square so that you can um, you can determine the center and then the radius of the, the circle. So completing the square. I'm going to have u squared plus, I have b plus 5 over 3 squared, right? So I have b squared, I have 10 over 3 b, and this squared. So I need to subtract it, right? So 25 over 9, and then the other one is what? Plus 1 is equal to 0. So 1 here. So I get u squared plus b, 5 over 3 squared. Is equal to, I'm going to take this to that side, that's 25 over 9 minus 1. This is 9, 9, that is 16 over 9. Okay? Uh, that is what? So we have u squared, b plus 5 over 3, all squared, right? Plus, no, this is equal to 4 over 3 squared. And then we know that this is. The equation of a circle in the W plane, right? Which is at the center 0 and negative 5 over 3, okay? And the radius of 4 over 3. So indeed, when I transform, right, this circle here using this, I get a circle. But the center and radius are different, okay? So let's let's finish this off. Let's finish this off. So we have so the locus C is indeed a circle circle center. Center is given by zero and negative five over three and radius. Radius is equal to what? 4 over 3. Of course, you can sketch it in the W plane, right? Oh, let me, let me do a better sketch. So we have, um, we have, hmm, alright, U and B, uh, X is 0, Y is, uh, this is almost 2, let's see. So I have 1, Two, negative, negative, negative three, negative four, one, two, three, 
and they get you. All right. So we are where negative zero and negative like negative one point seven there about. So the center is here. The radius of one point three also, right? So radius of one point three. So it cuts here. Uh, it comes there. There. Somewhere there. So you can get the circle. Okay, so in the W plane, you get you get the circle um, right there. All right, so that is it. That is uh, the end of the you know mind transform and you make from C to W. This is how you go about it. All right, let me know if you have any questions. All the best.